And our hope was, you know, we could just grab people after lunch and they had a nice full stomach of eating their lunch and then, uh, you know, half an hour, hour later they start getting sleepy and we could have them come in here. But what we found is that some people would get sleepy but not enough people. So what we ended up having to do was to keep people up for 24 hours. Um, no caffeine from 4 p.m. the day before and then they were chauffeured into our laboratory here at 6 a.m. that following morning and then they went for a simulated three-hour nighttime drive on the same road just nighttime uh, that you see here and uh, it was pretty pretty hard for some of the subjects to, to stay awake and in fact everybody on the staff here had to go through it just to experience it uh, and it was tough to stay awake all the subjects had to wear what's called an acta watch which is basically much like a wristwatch but it has a little accelerometer inside so it measures you know as you're up and moving it's measuring a signal and so when they came in we downloaded the data from the acta watch and if there's any flat lines we knew they were probably sleeping a little bit but not everybody was really good so there's maybe only a couple of brief moments where uh, we saw some flat line in the data but we were able to actually able to run uh, most people so this is a little bit of uh, some video from, I can show you the full three hours, a um, little bit of video from one of the participants. I had a question when you were walking in here, and I just want to make sure I answer that. Um, so again, the simulator uh, was operational in 2001, and the cost was on the order of $7 million uh, at that time. And uh, you know, there are, there are uh, in the U.S., this is the most advanced. There are one, some over in Europe that are, are uh, it's a little bit more prevalent over in Europe. For example, uh, you know, like BMW and some of our competitors have simulators. <laughs> Similar to this, everyone is a one-of-a-kind system, so not everybody has a vertex, but they will have a motion driving simulator, motion-based driving simulator with fairly large motion capability, okay? So let me get back to the uh, short drive here. So the first thing you're going to hear is he's going to be asked to rate his sleepiness level. And there's a one to nine scale, nine being really, really sleepy, really struggling to stay awake. Uh, this person can give a three, which is an alert. So this is at the beginning of the drive. Yep. I, I need you to um, use the scale on the dashboard to rate your sleepiness level. What number best describes your sleepiness level? <laughs> Okay, so he, first that was at the beginning of the drive, you know, he's been up all night, but he's feeling kind of alert, and if you watch his eye, you know, it's fairly open and, and awake. Now, during this part of the drive, he's asked to do um, essentially a reaction task, and so there's a little laser that would shine a dot onto the road in front of him, and then he was asked to push the steering wheel button as soon as he saw that dot, and what we find, right, is as you're getting more and more sleepy, your reaction time would increase, right? So you, you wouldn't pick up on it uh, as soon. Now, so his eyes are, you know, you can see he's a little tired, a little yawn here and there. Um, and then we're gonna get into, let me get to uh, six minutes later. <laughs> Starting just a little bit of yawn, right? Um, so this is the lane in front of him. Here's 11 minutes more. Oh, a little oh. bit more sleepy, right? <laughs> and you'll actually see now, right? So he's kind of lights out. Now, he was in a condition which is our baseline, which didn't have any alerting. And so you see, he's going to drift out. So he didn't get an alert, but we tried to keep people going. So we didn't want them to fully drive off the road and crash because the study would have been done. We don't, if people did crash, we didn't ask them to start driving again. So what we would do is if they got onto the shoulder, we would honk a horn, like much like a big truck behind them, right? To at least try to really get them away from him and come back in. And so that worked for him this time. But you'll see in the next case that uh, it didn't work uh, as well. And what you'll see is that he's going to drift off to the left and uh, virtually crash and his drive was over with. So we're gonna jump to that point here. Um, yeah, it's doing a pretty good job staying in his lane, even though his eyes are, eyes are closed, right? But here he's starting to drift and this will be the end of his drive, right? So it turns out at that point, he had just the horn didn't help him anymore and he drove out the road, okay? But this was useful information, right? I mean, it helped 
Um, it, was, it was some data that, uh, among other data that was collected um, for developing the Ford, probably the driver monitor system that's, that's uh, being rolled out now. And this is, you know, some really useful information. Uh, it's the longest driving simulator study that we're aware of where people are driving for three hours at a time where, you know, just kind of quote unquote the person off the street coming in and going for a drive. Oh.